Welcome to Woodshop 101, a woodworking audio podcast geared toward the hobby weekend woodworker. Your hosts for the show are Jeremy Crawford and Drew Shore. Join these two different craftsmen for a lighthearted banter about everything in woodworking, online education, and how they produce content. Topics could include the latest news, tips, tricks, and designs to include furniture, crafts, and shop projects. Welcome to episode number 27. Today we're going to talk about shop made jigs and which one we can we can or cannot live without. All right, we're joined tonight by our guest host Dima of Dima's Woodshop. What's going on, night, Dima? Hey, thanks for having me. Hey, I usually pronounce last names, but I I, I couldn't even try on yours. So you want to? <laughs> Mine's pretty easy. It's Gamma Unov. Oh uh, yeah, that, that would have been my for, first guess. Yeah, because sh- sh- Drew Short Short's pretty hard. So <laughs> Gamma Unov. Anything yeah, there past you go. two you got syllables? It. Yeah, anything past two syllables, we don't do. Yeah. It's exactly Craw- how it's spelled. <laughs> Crawford is, is as far as we get. I, I'm not sure if that's exactly how it's spelled, but... Gamma U Nov, yep. Okay, well, I mean... All right, well... <laughs> <laughs> Hooked on phonics here. Somebody needs it. I'm pretty sure I still have that from when I was a kid. Pretty sure. I need to check with my mom. <laughs> All right, Dima, well, you want to tell us uh, kind of about... About who you are for the people that may not know who you are? Well, for those, well, I'm not sure a lot of people know who I really am. So uh, I am a designer, a fluid power designer, engineer by day. That's usually what I do in the day. And then in the evening, I'm a superhero in the shop, pretty much doing woodworking stuff. I'm a father of two twins that, are, that just turned two years old a couple days ago. And I'm married to a beautiful wife of eight years now, going on nine. Oh, he got the wife in there. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> like I have two Where? kids, and I, I don't know. I couldn't do it w- with it if they were twins. Like They're five yeah. years apart, and I'm struggling. Yeah, me and my wife have a hard time remembering the first six months of, our li- of their lives. We pretty much don't know what happened between their birth and six months. <laughs> I mean, it's a blur. That's kind of how I am. And my son's five. I still don't remember. <laughs> it's like how old, how old are you again? How long we've been married? I think I've been married going on ten years. Yeah, my ten years is coming yeah. up in May. Mine's coming up in July. Yeah, our nine years is in May. May nineteenth, twentieth. Ah, oh, I'm July twentieth. <laughs> hey, see that, that we're great minds think alike. We all like around the twentieth. That's all right. My everybody in my family has a birthday on the eleventh, except me. So my dad's January eleventh. Mom's March eleventh. Their anniversary is March eleventh, and mine's August twenty fourth. And my brother's is July eleventh. Does that make sense? Hey, mine's July thirteenth. <laughs> See, at least we're cool because ours is in the same month. Wait, uh, who's cool? Me and your brother. Yeah, I think, I think, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just let's. This is derailed. We're 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 moving on. <laughs> oh, that hit, that hit a soft spot. <laughs> All right, Drew. What's uh what's going on in your shop? Well, I am still in the middle of my mud locker cabinet that's going to go by my garage door, and it's right now one of the cabinets is sitting up here. I'm actually in the process of doing the drawers. Uh, I got to assemble those tonight. I've got all the joinery and everything cut, uh, but I got to assemble them tonight and then start cutting the doors and drawer fronts. And then next week, hopefully, getting to the painting process before I have to leave to go to Florida. So it's busy. Well, it kind of sounds busy, but I'm pretty sure you've been working on that for about a month now. <laughs> Shouldn't you be done this? by now? Well, I had, to take a, I had to take a week off. You had to or you wanted to? No, well, I had to. We, but the want kind of happened with the need. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't. I haven't got much done. I was about to say, dude, you're you're razzing me for a month. Okay, look, let's. 2015 was just kind of a blur. Okay, I had a, <laughs> I had a baby. Oh yeah, true, true. <laughs> I didn't get much slept. shop time, <laughs> and she doesn't sleep, so I couldn't go out in the shop and work when she was asleep because she'd only be asleep for about an hour. But it's only one. <laughs> it's easy. I have a five-year-old. He's got. Uh, that's, yeah. that's, a, that's its own lifestyle. That's that's out of there. 
I don't have to do anything with the five-year-old. <laughs> here's a good question. Jeremy, where are your kids now? Um, in bed. <laughs> where have they been? I mean, they're in bed. <laughs> just not in my house. <laughs> they're at grandma's house, 10 hours away in bed. So, so the woodworking is being put off. Why again? Oh, because there's sh- shop uh, renovations. <laughs> no, it's uh, I've been kind of doing sm- small things, but I, I finally was just at the point of like I was tired of not having much light in the shop and it being dirty. So I've spent literally the last week and a half wiring some new lights and trying to just get the thing organized and finally get like clamps off the floor and trying to make it a more productive space or at least a more inviting space for me to go into. Mine are still on the floor. (laughs) I mean, let's let's be real. I bought the stuff for the clamp rack. They're still on the floor too. My (laughs) clamp rack is on top of the clamps on the floor. (laughs) (laughs) I don't think you've grasped the concept of a clamp rack. I mean, I haven't. It, I got all the parts. I don't know. <laughs> It'll be next year before I build it. So, is that no, one of your I, uh, I think about the only thing since we talked last. Let's see. I finished the pizza bills uh, two weeks ago, and I finished a cutting board that I have had for over a year f- for my mom. You know, like the the ones that pulled out from the cabinet, like that little tray style one. Oh yeah. yeah. I, so hers was originally just piece of plywood and I, I wish I still had it. I'll show you guys like this thing was a three quarter inch thick piece of plywood. And in the middle where she had cut was easily only a quarter inch left <laughs> and wear and tear. I was, I was like, all right, well let, I'm, I'm going to pull it apart and I'm going to keep the front and reattach just a new piece of plywood. And I, man, they had nails probably about that long. Like I've never seen finishing nails that long, throw it all away I just built it from scratch and actually used the uh, festival domino to make through tenons on the front, just kind of give it some kind of visual appeal. So I did that. Uh, well, I finished it up about three days ago. Uh, finished with the finish on it, and so my mom can stop bugging me about that. So that's done. <laughs> my, my my brother can stop bugging me about his pizza pill. That's done. My wife's not here, so she doesn't have to bug me about the dining room table. So she doesn't have to, but she will. Well, she probably won't. In fact, she told me like two days ago I should start packing up my shop already because we're moving in like five months. Already? Yeah. No, I, no. I was like, what? What? No. It's a little Tell early. Her, literally not. Yeah. <laughs> Tell her when it's two weeks till, then maybe it, so. It, it might be a day or two before. So. No, I still haven't even come to grasp with how I'm going to move the shop this time because when I moved from Virginia to here four years ago, I moved the entire shop myself in in a U-Haul trailer, and I'm not sure I want to do that again. So I don't know what I'm going to do yet. Why don't I just build a shop in the U-Haul trailer and just leave it there? Look, I'm trying to I'm trying to like come to grasp with buying my own trailer so that <laughs> I can idea. do that. I can have a mobile shop set up. So at least when I'm on like vacation for an entire month, because I take a month off every four years, and that way I can just build wherever I go. You want to go to the Grand Canyon? Okay, well, I'm going to be in the back building. So, <laughs> all right, Demo, well, what, have, what have you done lately? Well, this, this year I was kind of hoping it was going to start off pretty – slow and easy but that is not the case because it seems that people people want me to make stuff for them um in advance they paid in advance so i have to make it so usually when that happens i get all freaked out and i have to get stuff done so i've been making a lot of those uh vice kits lately so for the last probably two weeks uh, i made a few of those and now making some more People are asking about uh, those kits without the screw, which I was surprised because a lot of people are asking for those. So I've got a bunch of those getting ready to be done with those. And then I've got a project that I'm working on, which is a video, which I was hoping to have released like three weeks ago, which I'm not even halfway done with it. But other than that, just regular daily stuff. (laughs) 
I know when you first started selling the vice kits, you didn't think that they would sell near like what they seem like they're going. <laughs> I didn't really think anybody was going to buy them at all because really what I do with my videos is I show people how to make it. And so I expect people to just watch it and know how to make it by themselves. But then people started contacting me. He's like, hey, can you make it for me? He's like, okay, I'll make one. Making one is a pain in the butt. Making six or seven at a time is actually pretty easy because it takes about the same amount of time. So I usually make them in a batch. Yeah. And then before I'm even done making them, they're all sold out. <laughs> yeah. I uh, I mean, I know I've been talking to you a bunch about it, and I'm going to be getting one. I'm hoping March is the month that I get to start working on my bench build. Yep. Well, I've got so. I've got your thing done. So yours is your thing is done. Oh, see my th- see I, mine's I done. finished it up today. Yeah. <laughs> you you want to come build my bench too? Uh, no. It, I, I'm in the warmer weather. My garage is pretty warm. I know. <laughs> I don't, Show off. It's yeah. it's 52 degrees in there without the heater on, and I can get it to about 75, 80 with the heater on. Sure. Do you have a heater? Um, no, not yet. Uh, I don't either. <laughs> He's in, aren't you in warmer weather? Too? Oklahoma's pretty warm. Right now, the shop is staying decent just because I've, I've got an insulated door. Um, but it's it's down into the what, like mid thirties right now. So the shop's that's, roughly about mm, forty eight or fifty. That's t shirt weather. Well, that's kind of what I'm wearing right yeah. now. But it, it's not exactly warm by any stretch. Here, let's let's put this in perspective. It is. 46 degrees where I'm at right now, and I'm in a hoodie. So that tells you it's got to be cold. <laughs> and I've lived for eight years in New York City and um, Virginia. In the snow, no problem. I've been here for almost four years, 46 degrees cold. I got my heater set. I got my. In fact, I got fire going in the fireplace in the living room. You're in Texas, right? Yeah, I'm in like South yeah. Texas. I'm in Houston. Yeah, we, we laugh at people because we work with a lot of people from Texas and, and they call us or we get emails all the time saying, hey, Texas uh, plant is shut down due to inclining weather. And we look outside and we got like up to our necks in snow and we're still at work. Oh, yeah. I mean. Bunch of if, girls over there. If, <laughs> hey, you know what? That's okay. <laughs> I'll take a free day off of work any day. <laughs> and, from, and from what I hear, everybody drives trucks down there. Yeah, but they're pretty trucks. You can't take yeah, that out. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I can't tell you the last time mine's been washed. It's not pretty. I mean, it is pretty. It's a nice truck. <laughs> I was about to say. Huh? It, it's a pretty truck. But I like I like to take mine off-roading. No, I... Uh, it, it's a different type of cold here because it, it comes right off of the water. And so it's a little more... Yeah. And, and it's very uh, humid. So it's that cold, moist air. I'll go back up north any day. At least if it's cold, I'm getting snow. It's worth it. They say it's a different kind of cold. It is. <laughs> I mean, cold's cold, but at least it's, yeah, it's a different kind. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, today's topic that we're going to touch on is just about uh, jigs and basically what jig that we can't live without in our shop. Um I myself, I've got an array of jigs in my shop, but there is one in particular that I just cannot live without. And I've made two of them in the past, um, but that has got to be my crosscut sled. Um, It it is a workhorse in my shop. Uh, I still have to fine tune it from time to time just because of, you know, weather changes, humidity, making everything swell and and shrink. So sometimes the alignment kind of gets out, but, uh, and also my runners kind of swell up too, so that kind of sucks. But uh, having a crosscut sled in your shop, just it almost takes the place uh, of a compound uh, sliding saw and a radial arm saw, uh, especially if you make a, a fairly good size one. But that is that is probably my most used and probably favorite jig that I've got in my shop. I don't know. What about you guys? Well, uh, I don't know. I think I don't know, Dima. What about you? Let me think about mine. Well, I'm I'm not really big on using jigs in my shop. Um, I do use jigs. I make I usually make a jig for a project and then it just lays there. I don't use it again. 
Um, the crosscut sled, I didn't really consider it as a jig, though, because that's more of a tool that you build and use. Is that considered a jig, the sled? I, mean, I consider it a jig because it's it's something you use on the tool. Well, I well, I guess I, I use that. I use a crosscut sled all the time then, so I guess that would be my most used jig in my shop. Well, that little uh, sander station you, you have set up for your... I Wife? built that. I built that for a specific project, and I've only used it for that project. <laughs> <laughs> As he reverts back to his original point. <laughs> yeah, I pretty much made that uh, that jig on my lathe to make uh, myself a marking knife, and that was that's pretty much all I used it for. <laughs> used a jig to make one. Well, or I mean, he's made he's made several marking knives. Uh, uh actually, about twelve. <laughs> Okay. And they, yeah, they, they're all gone. <laughs> <laughs> I managed to leave one for myself. Well, you should make some more there. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting ready to cut dovetails. You should make some more. So, um, my favorite jig, I don't know. I, I don't, can't think of any one that I go back and forth to any more than the other. Um, I'm I'm probably gonna say mine's probably a miter sled. Um, I have two. I have one that was the design after Drew's, and then I have one that was designed I think after Steve Ramsey's, and I use both quite often. Um, but maybe not often enough, if that makes sense. So I don't, I would say if anything, the miter sled is probably my go-to and it's going to have to be the combination of the both because I grab whichever one's closer to me and make it work. <laughs> Didn't want to walk an extra two feet to get the other, other jig. Yeah, well, the other one's across the shop. In fact, the your design is actually the one sitting right beside the table saw. All the time. The stealth stealth fighter? I, I don't know. Is that what it's called? Is that what you call it? That's what I call it, yeah. Just because it looks like one. <laughs> I, mean, I guess if that's if you're going to start naming them, sure, that's it. <laughs> well, if you don't name your tools, you know, it's not worth having. Well, I mean, I got like Bessie and, and Jane. Bet- and Betsy? <laughs> yeah. Or Bessie? <laughs> Bessie. Bessie. Oh, Bessie. See, my, my table saw, it's Bertha. You know, it's huge. Big Bertha? <laughs> Big Bertha. <laughs> hey, I got, got a golf club named Big Bertha. I had one too. So I do that is the second most used jig in mine as well, is that, that miter sled. Um I, I I use it a lot for picture frames and edge banding and things like that. But uh yeah, I I tend to use that quite often as well. I forgot about that one actually. <laughs> yeah, I I mean I, I have so many and like Dima said, like, a, they're all pretty much made for, like, one specific job. And then, like, it, they're lucky if it gets used again. Um, like, I got a pretty extensive tapering jig. In fact, I used, I built it to make the sofa table taper, uh, tapered legs. And I don't think I've used it since then. And I might, I might strip it down because it's got some nice clamps and stuff on it. I might stri- use it for something else. I don't know. Because well, I don't know if that sofa table is ever going to get done. <laughs> you need a jig to make to finish that sofa table. <laughs> hey, I did go pick up the lumber uh, <laughs> last week to finish the top. So that is on the to do before I leave. When I'm when am I leaving? Thursday, next Thursday. So I'm going to try to have the sofa table done because as soon as I come back, it goes right into uh, the Brusso Hardware. Um, memory box thingy that I'm building that I'm trying to design and sketch up right now. So, well, since uh, here's a question, have, have any of you thrown a jig away that you spent time? I know because Dima's only used it for one purpose, but has anybody ever thrown a jig away because you're not using it anymore? No, I have all of them. Yeah. <laughs> so do I. They're all lined up on the floor next to my <laughs> drill press. And your clamp rack. Yeah, that's pretty convenient because that's exactly where mine are. 
They're right next to my drill press and my Becky clamps. <laughs> I have thrown uh, one or two away, but it's only just because I replaced them with something that was just a little bit better. But uh, I've, I've, nev- I've never thrown one away, but I have taken one apart to make a new jig. Oh, oh yeah. Material, yeah. Recycle. <laughs> Recycle, yeah. See, I don't even do that. I just got a load of them just sitting out there. So, well, since I'll, this is kind of a beginner, like Woodshop 101, if you could recommend a jig that somebody who's new to woodworking to build for their first jig, what would you recommend that they build? Ooh, there's a good one. <laughs> yeah, that is a good one. <laughs> I mean, I would like to say uh, like a crosscut sled, but I don't even have one. So, <laughs> Crosscut sled's a little more complicated. I had to build mine three times before I got it right. Yeah, um, twice for me. Yeah, it's, a crosscut sled's not really a beginner jig. Yeah, but it at least I don't think so. I mean, no, not really. But I can't think of any other jig that like you would use the most. I guess if 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 you want to get into beginner, I, you would have to more or less figure out what project you want to do in order to figure out which jig you want. The easiest one I've ever made, though, is that tapering jig. It was literally clamps and glue and some screws, and there you go. That's not bad either for a jointing jig as well. That can kind of be used the same way. So, I think a miter spline jig is probably the easiest one to build. Oh, you know what? That's probably going to have to be... My go-to jig. I forgot about that one. I've used it. In fact, I've used it so much that, like the bottom, like forty-five. There's like there's nothing there anymore. I've cut it all out. I've used it so much. <laughs> so there's no zero clearance anymore. No, not at all. In fact, I've been really contemplating building a new one, and I might go with another Rock and H style. I'm not sure. So I'd be honored. <laughs> I mean, you have could, another jig in your you, shop. You could build it to for me and just send it to me, and I'll put the runners on it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like Matt said, you might as well commission out all your work. <laughs> you build it now, and, and I'll make it work for me. Con- subcontract, yep, or isn't it. that what it was? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. So, I would. I would probably. Um, if if you didn't want to build the whole thing entirely. Uh, maybe just a piece of wood with maybe some store-bought uh, fence clamps that you can make a sacrificial fence for. Um, that's one of the easiest jigs to make. I use it quite a bit with my dado stack. Um, it, would, it would be a pretty good beginner kind of jig-making project or even just one of those um, spacer blocks that keep your wood from getting in between the fence and the blade for kickback purposes hey what well, i mean that's how are you gonna make that you just go get a scrap out of the scrap bin and, and clamp it to the but, but hey you can get something that have clamps on it so you can reuse it over and over again and not have to go hunt for a scrap well i have a piece of scrap designated for that and i just go get a clamp out of the clamp drawer and clamp it in why do but, i have to have a fancy clamp that's not what norm does norm, norm got a special little fancy coated one you know with for mica and all that stuff well i'm not fancy <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure if you've seen my shop, but it's it's uh just find what I can reach. <laughs> it just seems like where'd that jig at? I, I had it a minute ago. <laughs> In fact, I think I I think I actually have two miter spline jigs because I built one for a project, and then I, about a year later I, I was doing another project and I built another one, not realizing I already had one. So I think I actually have two of those. Both Make it jig just, you lost both just have one. <laughs> One cut through them for that one project. <laughs> <laughs> so next time he'll build another one. Well, no, Jeremy, this time I remember. I'll I'll make you the jig if you want me to, and I'll even pre-cut it for you. You can still do the runners, but I'll still I'll put all the cuts in it for you and hope it works with your saw. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll I, I'll figure out how to use it somehow. <laughs> <laughs> so now I've uh. I've really been wanting to build something for like dovetail keys, um, <coughs> but then it comes, you know, back to what Dima said. Like, you build the jig for the project you want, and 
I don't have time just to go build jigs just because. So, and I don't have projects on on the horizon that I have a need to build any more jigs for. As of right now, I might build. I'm thinking about doing my dovetails, um, bandsaw cut dovetails, and then chiseling out the waist. And I might create a jig to have them repeatable cut on the bandsaw. I don't know. Probably not. That's too much work. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Well, uh, we, we we talked about jigs, and I think we're all in the standpoint of they might or might not get used. Except <laughs> your crosscut sled, which I still need to make. So I'm about not doing that. Well, somebody said it's a beginner project, so you can get to work on that. No. <laughs> It'll be a year later before it gets finished. <laughs> so, all right, well, let's uh, talk about product recommendation. What's uh, what's something you guys want to recommend? Dima? I wasn't really sure what you guys meant if that has to be like woodworking specific or shop specific or it could be I guess anything, if it could be anything. It could be anything. It could be a book. It could be a fan. A fan, huh? Or it yeah. could be that nice heater that you have. Yeah, the one that people don't like that I have it in my shop. But anyways, <laughs> so I probably would recommend the indoor. I got this uh, wireless remote that I have. Um, it runs my dust collector and it runs all of my lights in the shop. So one remote runs um, three three functions, and I've been using it for two years and I spent ten bucks on it. And you can just keep adding to it. So all my lights, all my outlets have uh, are connected to it. So I don't know. I've been recommending this to everybody that's on a budget for remotes. You know, whatever. Whatever you want to do with the remote. Now, is this uh, one of those that you can get at like Lowe's or Home Depot to um, operate Christmas I, lights? Uh, no, I've tried different ones. And thank God for a return policy because I've tried them all. And this one seemed to last the longest. And uh, even with my dust collector kicking on on cold start, this one lasts the most. Um, actually, for it lasted for two years. I just replaced it yesterday. Burned out yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so I got uh, two years out of t- for ten bucks. I thought it was a pretty good deal. Yeah. I- mm-hmm. Drew, just go fix that. Yeah, I uh, use one of those. I think mine's Fast Cat, and it's been pretty awesome. Um, I think it lasts me a couple years. In fact, I've unfortunately had to replace it. In fact, FastCap replaced it for me because it kind of burned up and and ruined my shop vac. And so they were kind enough to actually replace the shop vac and the remote control module for me. Um, mm. But yeah, it's it's one of those things that like you don't realize how easy it is, or that you would even miss it until you don't have it. Oh yeah, when when mine burnt out yesterday. Um... I actually had to walk up to the dust collector to plug it into the wall to turn it on. Not not fun at all. No. And then walk back to the tool that I'm using. It took forever. Yeah, you don't. I mean, you just don't it realize like how easy. <laughs> hey, every second counts, man. You, do you have one of these, Drew? I've got well, not I, I've got one of those remotes that um, operates Christmas lights. I've actually gone through two. I think so uh, one of them burn up. So maybe you should get one that's rated for shop use. Are you being a smart aleck or something? No. <laughs> no. Well, the, the one I have isn't rated for shop use, but it works. Mine, it's a it's a three way. It actually comes with uh, three different plugs. It's a three way. Uh, it's got a it's got a, rem- a three way oh, remote. Is that kind of plug? Huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new tool. Wow. <laughs> but no, it's just a simple Christmas light uh, remote. Okay. Well, what? If- it's not Christmas time and people want to pick one up. Uh, tough. Then, then they're just going to have to go with what Dima has because yours is only a Christmas light one. Yeah, but it lasts all year. <laughs> Actually, yeah, it's lasted two years. All year. So, all right, Drew, what do you want to recommend? Um, Something, something that, that we can purchase year-round, though. 
Yeah, well, I wasn't going to say Christmas light switch, but um, no, something I actually used on my not, wasn't my last video. It was a video before, but it was a um, a Wixie mini height gauge. It's a digital height gauge uh, that actually straddles the the saw blade and has a ruler that comes down. And as you raise the blade, it tips the ruler and just takes it up into the gauge, and that digital readout will tell you how high your blade is off the tabletop and the uh, legs that are on that gauge are magnetized so it sticks to your table saw. So it's actually a pretty cool little gauge. I don't have a magnetic table saw. You don't have one? The what about the insert? Mm-mm. No? Mm-mm. No, mine mine is a composite top. It's a I think it's I'm trying to think. I talk. I was talking to somebody about it. It is. It's. It's. I think a coated aluminum top. And make a jig for it. There you go. Put rare earth magnets <laughs> hopefully, in. It. Hopefully, no, not and a one time use jig. Well, see the insert. If it was the stock insert from Dewalt, then yeah, it's metal. But I have one of the Lee Craft uh, Zero Clearance mm-hmm. in there, which is like the uh, plastic, whatever they want to call it, that high density plastic. I mean, I'm sure it'll still work, but not, have you had that long? Uh, no, I actually uh, got it in about two or three weeks ago. Yeah, I'm, the the two things that I want to get is from Wixie is like the digital height gauge and then the the angle gauge for the for the table saw blade. Yeah, I use yeah, that I all the time. I bought the angle one about two years, three years ago. Yeah, I mean, my battery for, ran dead in it. Now. I mean, for twenty five bucks, you'd think I I could go get one, but. <laughs> I seem to find twenty five bucks to spend on other things in the shop that I don't need. So, are you use that on any of your videos? Uh, yeah, about two videos ago, I I used it. Oh, I didn't really introduce it or nothing, but what video was that? The first, the first uh, mud mud closet thing. <laughs> 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 mud room locker. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I didn't. Cat. I didn't know what a mud mud room locker was. <laughs> I don't have a mud room, so it doesn't matter. So it's a shop room locker. I had to look it up. Shop mud. Yeah, shop mud locker. Mud room locker. Mud. Whatever. So it's it holds locker. my muddy shoes. <laughs> so it's a dirty locker. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Now is it, is that the one you use it on? Was that that first uh video of that one uh yeah i believe so um it was when i was cutting all the uh offset tongue and grooves in the uh cabinet carcasses hmm. i mean i def- definitely watched your video okay don't don't get don't get your feelings hurt <laughs> just don't remember that i wasn't gonna say nothing mm-hmm. maybe not here probably off air <laughs> and we're good so all right well i just recently picked up this this little beauty right here, the Joby, is that how you pronounce them? Joby, the little tripod magnetic things. Um, sure. I thought you said you had, you had one. Yeah, but I didn't know what it was to call it Joby. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm just like multi-articulating. Yeah, well, I, I think Joby's the brand, and it's they're called Gorilla Pods. Um, but yeah, I so I was kind of disappointed. So, you know, and this is your fault, Drew, because you talked up the Apple Watch so much and it won't even act as a remote for the video for iPhones. So, yeah, I got, where's that remote? So I is it paid just pictures like, only? Did yeah, I say so the, that it would? So, the, the, yeah, the Apple Watch will control the camera feature of your, of your uh, Apple device, but it'll only do... The camera it won't do any of the videos. Um, That's lame. Yeah. See, three hundred fifty yeah, bucks. Ask me if I told him that's what it would do. Uh, <laughs> For an Apple Watch, three hundred fifty bucks. Yeah. You, did you get one? Yeah, I got one. Unbelievable. I, no, I got it on. Well, I got mine on Black Friday, so I actually paid like two two hundred bucks, I think, for it. <laughs> I got one so. too. Still overpriced. Well, I mean, you, well, cell yeah, phones it's, overpriced. It's, it's a watch, and yeah, it it is, <laughs> and it doesn't control video. 
I had to there. spend another 25 bucks, but no, nah, I think so. I got this. Um, it came with the, the tripod and then the, like a cell phone or just an, an attachment that you can put, you know, camera or whatever. And then it also came with a nice little remote and this one controls video. Mm -hmm. So I picked that up and in fact, it came in Monday, I think, or Tuesday. It came in the mail and I've been playing with it. Um, and it, I, I really like it. And the feet, the the magnets in the feet are like real powerful. They were, I thought it was gonna be kind of flimsy, and but it uh works pretty well. So I'm kind of anxious to get it out in the shop and and get it stuck somewhere and see you know how it controls vibration and stuff like that. So can't can't use it on your table saw though. <laughs> no, <It's> not, not <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> They are pretty cool to, to uh, like if you're in a garage shop, <clears throat> because they are multi-articulate, you can wrap them around your garage door railing system, too, to kind of hang your camera up there. Yeah, I'm going to, my next video to shoot, I think I'm going to shoot all from cell phone and kind of see, and that, that's really why I picked it up. I want to kind of see the paces I can put it through, um, and Especially now, because I got the iPhone 6S, I think is what it is, and it shoots that 4K video. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it through its paces and kind of see how it performs. But I'm, I have, have good uh, hopes for it. I mean, it does the video. <laughs> Apple Watch wanted to do the video. No, but you know what? In fact, let it go. No, it, one of the cool things that I, I never even thought like. I was trying to I was trying to turn off the breaker to change out the light fixture in the garage or in the shop and our breaker panels for some reason here in in this part of Texas are outside. Everywhere else I've ever lived, breaker panels in, in like in the garage or something. <clears throat> and I said, What well, I don't want to run back and forth across the house. Just oh flip one and go back and look. And I remember, I was like, oh, I think the, like, you have live view on the Apple Watch. And so I turned on the camera and I went to the little app and it's live view. So I had the phone set up, propped up in the garage. So it would look at the lights and I ran out there and I'm flipping them, watching. Oh, and it turns off and I saw it live on my, on my uh, watch. I thought that was the coolest thing. You are welcome. <laughs> it doesn't shoot video. <laughs> it doesn't shoot video, but... You, you'll find out but, when your shop lights turn off. Yeah, no, I, I was like, they, like just something like that comes in so handy. Like when you usually have like a second person to help you do something, and you know, it, I don't need anybody in my shop. I'm out. I don't need to talk to nobody. I got, I got my my watch, and my phone. Thing do everything for me. I'm except video. Yeah, I'm Dick Tracy now. Oh, or, or Night Rider. Oh, Night Rider. <laughs> Ooh, man, we're showing our age there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I would like to think that everybody that's listening to us at least knows Dick Tracy and Night Rider. I at least to watch Night Rider. Yeah. You can still watch it on YouTube. The old the original series or the the, the original the one. one. The the new one was kinda lame. It got shut down. Oh well, yeah. I mean it went from a Trans Am to a Mustang. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, oh, the original Knight Rider. I used to have the DVD collection on it. Used to? What happened to it? I don't know. I think I gave it away to someone. <laughs> Why would you do Because <laughs> I don't have a DVD player anymore. <laughs> I uh, I didn't have a Blu-ray player for like the longest time. I only had, a, let's see, I had my like Xbox 360, which played DVDs. And my son, at five years old, is telling me, come on, Dad, get with the times. Get a Blu-ray player. <laughs> I'm like, because half of his movies are Blu-ray. It's like, yeah, well, you can't watch your movie here. So I finally finally got upgraded. I got a Blu-ray player. And uh, now my son's like, Dad, DVDs are, are gone. We watch everything on, like, the Internet. <laughs> okay, so I finally bought a Blu-ray player, and it's still not good enough for you. You want That's to stream all right. everything. 
I buy Blu-ray players and they don't play Blu-ray because it breaks like a week later. When you go buy an Xbox 360. <laughs> True. <laughs> you can do more than one thing. Well, look, so I got mine for birthday or Father's Day, I don't know, um, about a year ago. And I've played like one video game on it. <laughs> that's, that's an expensive Blu-ray player is what it is. Sounds like a jig. <laughs> yeah, it's a one-use thing. So, no, so um, yeah. So that's, that's that's my product recommendation. And uh, so hopefully in the next week or two, in fact, I'm, I might just try to put it through its pace and record a few clips um, of that sofa table this week. It's going to happen, Drew. Well, I'd be interested to see what that 4K video looks like then. Well, but see, I don't know. And both of you deal with YouTube a little more than I do. Is you does YouTube display 4K? Yes, it and, is. Mm-hmm. And first of all, but your TV or your monitor has to be able to accept 4K resolution. Yeah, yeah. So, you need a 4K monitor to view 4K video. You can view in, in 4K, but it'll just be like HD. Yeah, you won't see the difference, right? No. So, Drew, how would you see the difference? I'm gonna use my imagination. I mean, mine, my nice new computer here that I recommended. That nobody <laughs> liked that I recommended. <laughs> Your new, the new computer you just bought should have 4K capability, shouldn't it? It's 5K. It's 5K. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't even, I don't even know like what is 5K. I, do they? It's come, one bigger than four. Yeah, but nobody even shoots in 5K. Exactly. So, so it's overkill. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I. But see, it may just be. I, I can't even notice a difference. I mean, I'm sure it's there. But um, anything's better than the low res HD I was shooting the like the 720 thing is what I was shooting in. So yeah, that's like five years ago. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm too cheap to buy a new camera. So I'd say you're talking to the dude that just got a Blu-ray player. In fact, <laughs> hang on, I'll show you. I'll show you on my camera. It's purple. <laughs> That's like those uh, Canon Sure Shots. Is that what that is? Nikon Cool Picks. Nikon Cool Picks, yeah. Ooh, look at that. He knows. He knows his cameras. Yeah, that's... That's because he probably upgraded it five or six years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See? Oh, that still funny. has a sticker on it. Yeah. yeah. You don't take those off. You pay extra for those. That's coming off, but... <laughs> yeah. No, I... And that's really... Uh, one of the reasons I haven't shot a lot of video... It's because it's very poor video quality. Um, that's why, you know, with the with the cell phone, I'm going to try to get um, some better some better video out of it, and hopefully that will motivate me a little more. I I don't like I'll go out there and shoot video all day long, and then I come back in and want to edit it, and I can't stand looking at the pixelated stuff that comes off that camera. So maybe I'll use it to like run through my plane or something, see if I can get a cool shot. We'll He's going to run his camera through the planer. A lot of people do. They put like GoPros and stuff on them. <laughs> I did, yeah. <laughs> did you? I did, yeah. Math shop. That was a while ago. Yeah, how, how did that work out? It was, all, it was actually pretty cool. I think, I, I think that's when I was building my workbench. I stuck it on the side of the slab and we just ran it through. <laughs> so we, we could see the blades spinning and cutting, cutting the, the wood down. It's pretty cool. Mm. I would probably put it in the wrong place. <laughs> my camera would be the one getting plain, not the wood. Yeah. <laughs> so. I wanted to shave my lens down a little bit. Yeah. Um, all right, Drew, you want to get into what's new? Um, well, we I'm, have got a big giveaway going on. Uh, it just kicked off with our anniversary that we had uh, back on, um, let's see, February February 3rd was our anniversary. Is that correct? Yeah. I think I was right. So, yeah, so we just we yesterday. just passed it. Ooh, that was yesterday. That was yesterday. Happy anniversary, man. Yeah, happy anniversary you too. Hey, I'll send you some flowers. All right. Uh, well, I didn't get anything yet. But uh, it's in the mail. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> in the mail. <laughs> mail run kind of slow. You'll get them next year. It's snail mail. But yeah, we got a giveaway going on right now. You can find all the information at uh, countrysideworkshop.com slash giveaway. Uh Jeremy, what kind of uh, sponsors do we have for this giveaway? Um, general finishes 
is going to give away two quarts of finish of the winner's choice. Let's see, Bellforce Products is going to give away a $100 gift card. Um, let's see, who else was on there? Rockler. They were giving away the, what were they giving away? The small hose port kit, right? Mm-hmm. And then we have Microjig. It's going to give away two Gripper 100s and a T-shirt. So that's uh, four winners that we're going to pick at the end of the month. And it's going to end on December. December. Jeez. Wow. December. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to end it's on, late, folks. It's late. Or it's going to run a long time. <laughs> now it's going to end time to enter. <laughs> February 29th at 11.59 p.m. Central Time. So go enter over there. Take um, advantage of that leap year, folks. Yeah, yeah, I'm giving you an extra day. Extra day. <laughs> so, uh, uh, let's see. We, we've we also had, uh, I guess, some questions in regards to our weekly shows. Um, what the difference is between our weekly shows, because uh, we had some confusion if people were actually thinking we were going to change the format of every one of the episodes. Um, and the episodes that you're listening to right now, the format is pretty much the same. We're going to try and still have... Uh, a guest pretty much every time we do this show uh, unless just something comes up to where we just cannot get one for you because they just don't like us anymore or something like that. <laughs> yeah, Dima's probably not going to want to come back. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's see, we've, we've started a new format to where we are actually going to do this on a weekly basis, but it's not going to be like this show. Um, we're doing like a 20-minute episode, maybe 15, 20 minutes, of just something that uh, we're going to compare and contrast, um, either a, a certain tool or um, ways that we do specific woodworking projects. I mean, just it, it's kind of like a here's the here's the topic, and I put it <laughs> I put it last week like there's just no foreplay; it's all action. I mean, we we don't really go through all of the beginning stuff, what what you're doing in your shop and and whatnot. It's it's basically the topic starts about. The, the moment the intro is over, and then that's how we end it with a conclusion at the end. So um, there's really not a big format change as far as this particular show goes. Uh, we're just adding an extra episode uh, to fill in that, that weak gap that we had. Yeah, um, and I know, so at least I think on a few of the YouTube comments, that's where it was, people were like, don't get rid of the other show, you know, don't don't do it, and... Yeah, we're we're not getting rid of it. We're just doing something different on the off weeks. So, yep. all right. Well, let's see, uh, if you guys would like to support the show, um, you can head over to woodshop one one podcast dot com slash listen and find the show notes for today's episode, and then you'll find links in each one of the episodes for small uh, one time donations. If you missed it from two weeks ago, we're heading away from Patreon. It's just not been a very suitable platform for us. Um, so we're moving into like PayPal donations. Um, and if you can't donate monetarily, we would really appreciate you heading over to um, iTunes and leave us a rating. Giving us a five-star rating helps us reach a greater audience. Um, and in fact, just Drew and I were talking about it today. Um, we were highlighted on uh, the uh, Darwin U- Uvar. Is that how you say it? Darwin Uvar um, podcast. What is it? Orver. Orver. Darwin Orver. Orver. Yeah. Well, they look, man, I'm from Texas. We we fix, we <laughs> fixing the do we fixing the do stuff. <laughs> so no. Um, so she she wrote a blog about uh, like the eleven um, maker podcasts to listen to, and we're listed as one of them. And then modern word. Uh, Woodworkers Association actually talked about our podcast on, I think it was their latest uh, mm-hmm. episode, episode 87. So it's it's great to finally see um, other people starting to recognize, or or at least that the podcast is starting to grow um, after a year. And believe it or not, it's it's been a lot of work um, for Drew and I and the guest hosts that we get on to to grow this podcast over the last year. So we would 
Greatly uh, appreciate you going to leave us a five-star rating. And you know what I didn't do? Mm. That voicemail in that in that uh, rating that we had. Oh, dude, we can't not end this show without playing that voicemail. Oh, well, y- y'all are going to have to f- figure out some dead air here while I try to pull it up. <laughs> I am going to pull up his... Uh, his iTunes review. I don't know. I see one here from him. It's, it's just, uh, it says by Matt Cremona. So this is him. It says, this is uh, the best thing since anything. Five stars. Awesome. <laughs> we've actually had quite a few over the last uh, week. We have MWB Morley left one. Says Drew and Jeremy are great on this podcast. They offer a great perspective of balance, life, family, and their love of making and woodworking. And then, but, Blow and man, bowl man. I don't know. <laughs> Bowling man. Hey, whatever that says. <laughs> the faster pace is great. Hey, there we go. We're so we're, we're doing better. Yeah. So uh, you know, it's it's good that we're starting to get those. Um, and let me see if I can get you guys the voicemail. All right, here you go. I'm gonna play it and. Uh, we might have to edit it because I have no idea what he left. Double here on the air. Oh, hello. I reached the, is this the Wish Off 101 podcast? I had, I had some kind of inquiry that I couldn't recall now that I dialed your number, so I'm going to have to call back later and just kind of figure out exactly why, but I wanted to ask, because I knew it was a really good question, I thought it would be a really great topic for your viewers, or I guess your listeners, because no one gets to see you. Um, I'll call you back. Have a fantastic day. I, I got to go. There's some guys on the other line here on my Skype extension that I got to go talk to. Oh, I'm leaving them hanging. Um, I'll catch you later. <laughs> he never called back, did he? He never called. No, he didn't. Matt, why have you not called back? You you heard it from Dima. He I said he called back. A, I think that was a pity voicemail. That's what that was. It was yeah, a pity voicemail. It was. But we said we were going to play it. So, Matt, <laughs> thanks for leaving us a review and a voicemail. Um, we'll... We're gonna. I'm gonna leave it right here on my desk, so when I fill down, I can play it. So did you? Let's see. Somebody left another one too that you missed. Uh, Crawford 06 <clears throat> said that these fellows are funny. This is such a great podcast, especially when uh, the episode Matt Cremona guy was on. <laughs> I look forward to listening to every show until they no longer decide to record. I'm your number one fan, Drew. Woo! I, I wonder who that that Crawford 06 is. <laughs> I don't know, but I like it. Yeah. <laughs> so all right well uh dima you want to tell us how everybody can contact you if they want to contact you individually i am pretty much everywhere if you go to google and type in dima's woodshop um pretty much the first two pages are going to be filled with my information and where i'm located i'm pretty much the only dima that does woodshop stuff on youtube in the country, I mean, you might be the only demon in the country. <laughs> uh, there, there is another, there is another one, but he does other stuff. <laughs> hey, That's he, why I, I couldn't. I tried to take that name, and I couldn't because he had it. He, he's not the cool one. He's no, he's just no. The, he's some. He doesn't, other, he's he some doesn't have guy. a YouTube channel. No, is he's it, some random. Is his guy. last name is his last name easier to pronounce though? That's the question. Uh, I do not know his last name. <laughs> Like I see, I already forgot how to pronounce your last name. So, Gamma you know. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> all yeah, right. Dima, yeah, Dima's Woodshop, and it pretty much all uh, every, it'll show up everywhere. All right. Well, pretty gonna, easy to find. I'm, so if I if I'm in trouble, they'll find me pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Still, Dima's Woodshop. So, well, what about you, Jeremy? What's your contact info? Uh, you can pretty much find everything. I would say you could Google mine, but you'll not find me probably in google um you can go to countrysideworkshop.com and there you'll have links to all social media youtube um, instagram i'm pretty active in fact i'm the most active on facebook and instagram twitter may look like i'm active but that's just because it's backfed by a program that i signed up for um <laughs> it's definitely not the case in fact I, I get on it about once every two weeks that's that's about right. I think we're so, all aware of your Twitter capability. <laughs> not, in fact, I understand Twitter a little more now. I hate um, Twitter. <laughs> but here's the thing is, is if I'm going to post on Twitter, I'm going to post it on Facebook too. So I might as well only post it one place and have it backfed from the other. So Cheater. <laughs> oh, really? Do you individually post on each individual social media? 
Yeah, I actually do. Oh well, we we don't we all don't have that much time. <laughs> we want to be yeah, our- like like I do this. Uh, nothing but but Twitter. Well, uh, as far as the Rock and H Woodshop, you can uh, you can basically just search me by name on YouTube, just Drew Short, and it pulls up my channel pretty easily. You can also find my website that has all my contact information on it, which is rhwoodshop.com. Um, like Jeremy, I'm pretty active on Facebook and Instagram, uh, but I also do Twitter. Uh, <laughs> Jer- Jeremy still hasn't learned that, but I- I'm pretty familiar with it. Uh, but yeah, just all my contact information is on my website. That's one of the best ways to, to find anything you need to know about me and how to get a hold of me. Uh, as far as the Woodshop 101 podcast, uh, you can go to woodshop101podcast.com slash listen. Uh, there you can download <clears throat> or stream any of our episodes on any kind of device. Uh, you can also find us on YouTube pretty easily by searching our name. And uh, we are also on iTunes, as Jeremy mentioned. Uh, and also, if you can leave a comment or a rating, that would help immensely. Uh, it will help us get into the public eye a little bit more for future sponsorships, so that will help a great deal. Um, basically, that is it for us. Uh, Dima, we had a great time with you, dude. Yeah, thanks for having me. I enjoyed it. Yeah, We'll have you, we'll have you again. Maybe we can put you and Matt on the same show. Let's let's just say we'll we'll offer whether or not he accepts is another thing. <laughs> yeah. Well I mean we've had a lot of guest hosts and not only accepted the second invite, so <laughs> there's that must tell <laughs> that must mean we're so awesome that they just can't be seen with us or heard with us. Or they start their own podcast, one or the other. Yes, they never Ooh, come back. Oh yeah. <laughs> we did <laughs> have that. we did have two guest hosts that started their own podcast huh <laughs> maybe we were inspiration maybe <laughs> well maybe they just think they like they're gonna do so much better than we are <laughs> probably i mean hey we're just we're just swinging it there you go no we're swinging it we're not swingers yeah <laughs> so well, uh dima we we appreciate it i had a i had a blast and uh for any of you guys listening if you have any other uh, guest hosts that you want to recommend or any type of topic ideas that you want to recommend be sure and drop us a line we'd love to hear from you so uh from jeremy myself and our guest host dima gamma you know we want to wish you guys well please be safe in your shops and uh dima i know you've heard the the outro pretty well on my show in here so we're going to give everybody a good sign off one two three Boom! Boom.